So I'm super excited that we managed to sort of take lemons and turn them into lemonade. Um, so we're benefiting from a COVID-related scheduling snafu at NYU um, and that brought Sarah and Mathieu from Paris to the United States and we got her from New York to Boston thanks to the Center for European Studies and, and to Elizabeth. Um, so thank you for that. And I just want to briefly introduce her and then let her start her talk. So she's a directrice d'études, what we would call a full professor of sociology and religion at the Ecole Pratique des Autres Études in Paris. It's an institution with a very storied history in both religion and sociology. She's a specialist of everyday religious phenomena in contemporary France with a particular focus on families and family life. She's worked on a lot of subjects, the transmission of Jewish identity in interfaith couples, the way committed Catholics view and use assisted reproduction in their family-making practices, and most recently, the presence of Catholic thought in contemporary French public debates about bioethics. I first got to know her work through her beautiful ethnography, L'Enfant des Possibles, Assistance Médicale à l'Appropriation Ethique, Religion et Filiation, and that book documents the role spiritual beliefs play in how both doctors and patients engage with new reproductive technologies and think about the families those, reproduct those technologies produce. She has a brand new book out that steps back from the clinic and looks at the sort of wider context of French debates about bioethics and family making. That book, published with Cavalier Bleu in 2020, is called Faire Famille Aujourd'hui, PMA Bioethique et Religion. And I take from all of Sévanine's fantastic ethnographic work attention to the contours of French secularity and its fine-grained attention to everyday practices and com conversations that allow her to show how the texture of French secular life is so much more complicated and, and uneven than either the Assad-inspired studies of secularity in Europe and, and elsewhere show or a simple focus on French legislation and what people are increasingly call, calling militant laïcité would suggest. So Severine is a preeminent scholar of religion and secularism in France, but there's another thing about her that I think is equally important, and I just want to spend a second on it, and it's the way she mentors and supports more junior scholars. So the event that was canceled at NYU was a roundtable to promote the book of an assistant professor who's also a scholar of Catholicism and secularity, and the support that Severine was poised to show that scholar, she has always shown me. I'm relatively new to medical anthropology, and totally new to thinking about Catholicism in France. And when I showed up in Paris in 2016 and then 2017 to begin a new stint of fieldwork, Sarah immediately became an invaluable interlocutor for me. She gave me a sense of who in French sociology, sociology I should read. She included me in important conferences. She wrote letters supporting grant applications. And she helped introduce me to some of the biggest names in medical anthropology in the US. And I was a total stranger. So I can only imagine the kind of support she gives her students and younger colleagues. And that just can't, we can't say enough about that in, in contemporary academia. So this makes me super excited that she can be here to share her work with us today. I'm blushing. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't remember. <laughs> I'll just take my phone to, for the minutes because I don't have a watch. OK, so. Um, I won't be as brilliant as uh, Kimberly for, the <laughs> for thanking you, but uh, I truly uh, thank uh, Kimberly uh, to, have, to give me this opportunity to talk in front of you uh, today. And a special thanks to Elizabeth who made that trip possible too. I mean, uh, you were very efficient. I was very impressed. Like uh, Kimberly invited me on, on the morning and just after three hours <laughs> I received my ticket, trains, everything, if what I needed. So that was, uh, so thank you very much Elizabeth. Um, so wha what I'm, I'm going to talk about, uh, about today is uh, the, um, the French Catholic mobilization during revision of French biotical laws during uh, uh, 2018 and 2021. And uh, I, I would just uh, start, so it's mostly uh, ethnographical work, field work, and also like I analyzed uh, the um, articles from newspaper and I interview also people uh, who were involved in those, um, in those, uh, in those, um, in that revision. So to begin with an example, I would say that on, on September 25th, 2018, the French National Consultative Ethics Committee for Health and uh, Life Science. It's designated in France through the acronym CCNE, Comité Consultatif National d'Ethique. And they published their opinion called Opinion uh, 129. I mean, they are, they, they're, since they've been created in 1983 and they, they publish opinion once in a while. 
And um, so among the suggested uh, revision, the committee declared itself in favor of uh, opening assisted reproductive technology, ART, to lesbian couples and single women. And uh, so immediately actors who disagreed this, uh, with this opinion, immediately they expressed their discontent. And that same evening, so it's uh, September 25th, 2018, an association, you might have heard of it, called La Manif Pour Tous, which is, a, so it means demonstration for all. And it was, um, in fact, it's an association which was created in 2012 to oppose legislation that would uh, open marriage to same-sex couples in France, which they saw as mariage for all, in fact. Instead of saying extension of the wedding to gay people, they say mariage pour tous, mariage for it. So this, um, so the, the just after the CCNO gave this advice, they organized a manif pour tous, organized a demonstration in Paris, uh, in front of the CCNE's headquarters. And on the following Sunday, which was September 32, 18, Monseigneur Michel Aupetit, who is Archbishop of Paris, so Catholic, um, a Catholic uh, dignitary, was interviewed in a newspaper, in a French, very French popular newspaper called Le Parisien, very wide public. And that was very strange to see it was on the first, on the front page, that uh, Catholic bishops. And um, he, in that, he, he gave a big interview, three pages interview, and say that uh, Catholics should mobilize, with, mo yeah, mobilize themselves with wars against this extension of the use of ART. And his main topic was to uh, express the respect of human dignity. So it is important to note that opposition comes mainly from the Catholic religious hierarchy and its representative and some conservative groups and that it's not necessary from all Catholics as individuals practicing their religion. So there's a big gap between Catholic authority, Catholic hierarchy and Catholic practi practitioners. And also at first when I, I, I wanted to look at all the religions Ag mobilizing against that revision, but it happened that most were mostly ca Catholics too, and so that's why I'm going to explain you. So let us begin by recalling that the Roman Catholic Church has not only condemned contraception and uh, abortion, it's also, uh, it has also officially expressed its opposition to any kind of ART, assisted reproductive technologies, particularly so they have a, uh, what they call encyclic, I don't know if you say encyclic in, in English, it's text, it's official text that the Vatican is publishing. <laughs> Encyclical? Okay, sorry. And so there's one in 1987 called Donum Vitae, then in 1995 there's Evangelium Vitae, and then 208 Dignitas Personae. And so the, in its doctrine it invokes the respect of natural law which forbids dissociating the union of the two sex from procreation. So in my talk, I, would, um, I will uh, analyze the discourse of the French Catholic Church and of the two main associations that claim to be secular, but whose position has always been aligned with those of the Catholic hierarchy. Um, furthermore, the current, uh, I mean, the, these debates, in finally, I mean, I, I'm going to spoil the end of that story, is that last August, the, the law opening ART to lesbian couples and single uh, women was uh, adopted in France. So, that's the, it ended like this. But um, so those, those current, those debates on the opening of the ART must be understood in the line of what happened during the revision of uh, the biotics law of 1994 and also around the debates uh, around the civil society pacts. You have this also civil union, it, we have uh, in 1999. And um, I refer you to, I, I, I may refer, refer here to Camille Ropsis, uh, who has shown the importance of the alliances between uh, cons re reactionary movement and their political power. So there's two main associations who fight against uh, opening of ART. There's La Manif Pour Tous, and a second association is Alliance Vita. In fact, Alliance Vita, so I already talked about La Manif Pour Tous, which was, um, which was uh, created uh, against opening the wedding to everyone. And the second association is Alliance Vita. And Alliance Vita is in fact a new name chosen in, in 2011 by the former who was um, Alliance pour les droits de la vie. It was an association which has been founded by uh, Christine Boutin, a right-wing politician and leader in the fight opening uh, civil unions in so 1999. 
and um, both during the legislative debates and even after the law was successfully passed in 1999. So it's very interesting to point out that, I mean, this is a long fight. And even though the laws are here, they're still fighting against it. And uh, at present, the, the general delegate is a man called Tugdual Derville and um, is occupying a very strategic and operational position at Alliance Vita. And uh, although he's Catholic, and like in, uh, they, they have like session in that group, to, and in, in all the session they start with a prior, but they say we're secular, we're not Catholic, and he's a very conservative Catholic. But he considers his association as secular and thus open to anyone with similar positions. But there's no, mostly, uh, um, we have a, a student who made a master degree thesis on this association, and she showed how much she was invested mostly by Catholic person. So in my talk, um, I would, um, um, that the, I would argue that the Catholic mobilization during the, that revision on the, that last revision on the biotics law manifests their wish to influence, to influence lawmakers by bringing Catholic religious norms to bear in secular debates. So that's a very important point. How you bring Catholic norms, uh, religious norms to bear on secular debate. So it draws, that research, it draws on two kinds of materials, an ethnographic survey, an observation, doing what, what they call the état généraux de la bioéthique. It's like uh, a state generals of bioethics. It's based on, uh, it's like a public forum, in fact. Um, and they held in, um, in 2018. And the second material is an analysis of the positions presented by the Catholic uh, hierarchy uh, in the media and in documents produced by its own institutions from 2018 until uh, 2020. Um, so I will mostly focus on Catholic arguments against access to ART. Um, I would like to highlight the specific way in which the French Catholic Church and Catholic Conservatives managed to weigh in on the, on the debate. So it is important also to remember that France is a secular state, meaning that religion is born from interference in government policy and that, in principle, religious norms can't be imposed on a secular state. However, as I'm going to try to show you, by naming this law relative to bioethics, the moral debate overlaps with the legislative debate, opening a bridge in a secular state that separates religious norms and law, thus offering a re religion a pulpit in the political arena. Um, so I, I just, um, I also try to, to make a little comparison with the situation in the States because it's quite different. So although my talk will focus on the French case, I, can, I would like just to briefly compare how France endorsed policy decisions on biotical issues with the way the United States uh, endorsed the same problem, so as to highlight the peculiar characteristic of the French approach. So I'm not uh, familiar with um, United States uh, policy, so please forgive me if it's a little approximative, but so under the, in France, under the presidency of François Mitterrand, 1981-1995, the French National Consultative Ethics Committee, the CCNA I talk about, was created in 1983. And its mission was to clarify, was it at stake in recent advance in the life sciences, and it was also to stimulate social debate on these issues. So the committee's task is to give its opinion on moral problems raised by research in the fields of biology, medicine and health, whether these problems concern man, social group or society as a whole. So the CCNA mission was reformulated in the revised law of bioethics in, two, in 2004 and it's an independent authority with um, 39 members of which five who represent the principal philosophical and spiritual communities are named by the president of the French Republic. Which means that at what point we have clearly represented of religion in that CCNA. So the CCNA president is also named by the French president for a two year term. So France promulgated its first uh, bioethic laws in 1994 and um, so and then it was revised in 2004 and uh, now <coughs> it's, it was supposed at first to be revised every five years and now it's more like seven years. Um, so and uh, so after the so it was 
uh, created in 1994, then revised in, two, in 2004, and then it was revised also in 2011. Uh, but that, that the last revision in 2011 didn't change uh, much concerning uh, ART. So France thus regulates ART in a way that is quite distinct from the United States. France na national bioethics laws elaborated as a revisible, re revisible, revisable, revisable, sorry, code that structures public conversation around issues of bioethical importance is a distinct characteristic of its approach to morally controversial legislation. <coughs> On the other hand, the United States doesn't deal with bioethical issues through national legislation, a state of affairs perhaps best understood as the commitment to two US principles. First, the separation of church and state, but you, you tell me what you think about this, making all reproductive questions too controversial for national legislation. The second is the state's right to regulate or not free market in research, public health and biomedical services. So now, I, I briefly, I'll try to examine the way these issues are handled in the United States. So in the United States, as far as I could notice, there used to be a presidential commission for the study of bioethical issues established as an advisory committee. It prepares reports that are being sent directly to the president, and it has no role in drafting legislation, that is, writing bills that will be debated and possibly passed in Congress. And before the presidency of Donald Trump, the past three presidents had established bioethic commission to explore ethical issues in science, medicine, and technology. And uh, like President Clinton, he created a National Bioethics Advisory Commission. And uh, President Bush established the President Councils on Bioethics, which issued report on stem cell research, human enhancement, and reproductive technologies, among other subjects. In November 2009, President Barack Obama created the Presidential Commission for the Study of Bioethical Issue, and Trump, Trump did not reappoint this commission, nor did he create a new one. And the last Bioethical Advisory Board was held in January two, uh, 2017. But I, I don't know what if uh, Biden did something, so maybe you, mi you might know. So, uh, so I have to admit that I have no, no knowledge about uh, if there is something created by um, Biden. As opposed to the French CNA, uh, an advisory committee instituted by law in the US, President's Commission come and go according to the desires of the particular uh, executive in power. Moreover, some presidents have used their executive power to promulgate policies that in France would normally be regulated by legislative power. For example, in 2001 and then once again in 2006, Bush, George Bush, during his second presidential mandate, declared that the embryonic stem cell research could not be financed by federal funds except if the cell lines were already in existence before his executive order. So this was understood, I don't know if you remember, as an anti-abortion measure. And uh, given that the right to life movement was arguing at the time that the miracle cures promised by embryonic self search research would lead to more abortion as a way to capture and commercialize uh, fertile cells to establish new stem uh, cell lines. Um, so in France, such a debate will ultimately have been held and decided in Parliament. So ART, that's my, my following point, is a moral issue in France. So the way French laws deal with the question of access to ART reflects a concern to maintain the practice of ART within familiar moral boundaries. The recent adoption by the French National uh, Assembly of the revised law, so it's August 2021, those uh, bioethical revised law, um, which, uh, among other things, makes ART accessible to lesbian couples and single women, is still contested by some moral actors. And like we have those presidential campaign right now in France, because we're going to have election next, um, next April and May, and some of the um, rightist movements say once we get elected, we'll uh, ban uh, we'll ban ART to, um, to gay couples, we ban mariage for all, and uh, so it became also a very, uh, an argument, I mean, they still contested that. So this mobilization of the Catholic Church may seem surprising in the French secular context, 
However, um, like we have, uh, there's an historian called Denis Pelletier notes that in the past, matters such as contraception, abortion, and no ART belong to what he called an area long governed by one's conscience, parental authority, and the teaching of the church. He mentions the concern expressed by Catholics that they are becoming a minority in French contemporary society, that their values and norms are less and less shared by other citizens, and that practicing Catholics are also declining in numbers. He then goes on to explain how the state has developed what Denis Pelletier called a politics of life that uh, blurs the boundaries between intimate life and politics, thus building the basis for what Denis called a republic of intimacy. Republic de l'intime. And this Republic of Intimacy, according to Denis Pelletier, it organizes in the public sphere what used to be regulated in the private sphere. In producing a politics of intimacy, secular authorities are bringing religion into the biotic debates and giving it a voice in a democratic space. This is my observation. So besides the Etat Généraux, the French CCNA, CCNA also held hearings before the held hearing, hearings, the ear people, <laughs> before the revision of the biotic laws. All the monotheistic religious uh, religions sorry, were represented. They all expressed their opposition to opening ART to single women and lesbian couples. The French Protestant Federation, the, what is called FPF, FPF, was a bit more moderate, expressing its um, reticence, articulating the multiple voices in the Protestant Federation, and acknowledging that among French evangelicals, some are indeed strongly op opposed to open access to ART. But it is mostly the Catholic hierarchy, together with a group of conservative Catholics, who mobilize in a, into a strong public opposition to this particular article of the law, the, the article of the law which opened ART to lesbian and, gay and uh, single women. So this strong, according to me, this strong religious opposition can be understood in the context of what the sociologist Daniel Hervieux-Léger calls the French context of exculturation. So what does it mean, exculturation? It means that a significant part of, a, of the French population continues to identify with Catholicism, even though the French cultural universe in its present um, in, in its present religious and cultural diversity, we have a lot of cultural diversity now in France, no longer adheres to its references and values. This is what it's called uh, exculturation. S thus, family issues remain the object of everyone's attention. The French biotic laws organize a partial, or partial transfer from Christian moral authority to state-regulated biotics. At the earth of these moral domains lies the question of the family. And uh, so I'm kind of answering your, your remark. With the individu individualization and the affirmation of an autonomous subject, the family can be seen as something other than a model produced from a natural and sacred order. Daniel Hervieux-Léger has shown that this model of a family rooted in its naturality can be traced to two inseparable sources, a reference to what we call a natural law, by which, in fact, the internal, so like the divine, is inscribed in human and social reality, and a foundation on natural laws, which prescribes, in physical and, and biological order, the life and survival conditions of the human species. As a consequence, a natural family and a biological family merge, at least implicitly. Scientific progress, continues Daniel Hervieux-Léger, questions these natural laws. In reaction, a new mechanism that sacralizes the biological order is being put in place. Opening RIT to single women and lesbian couple is a proof of this upheaval of the natural order of things. It also shows the multiple resistance at stake in all matters that concern the family. Indeed, the Catholic, Catholic norms sorry, concerning the family are still strongly supported in a context where secularization and individualization have progressed. Thus, we can better understand the sources of opposition to the revision of the French bioethic laws. 
The same arguments used by Catholic stitchings in France are also used else elsewhere around the globe. But it is vital, I guess, to under I think, to understand that in France, appeals are being made to a specific historic and cultural context, comprised of both of, of 20th century laws, 1905, that separates the church and the state, whose principles are embedded in the French term laïcité, and a centuries or present of the Catholic Church, even if today, as I tell, this institution is widely perceived as weakened. So this context, this specific French context, provides the basis for a form of religious opposition to morally controversial legislation that is specific to France, precisely because public policy discourse insists on laïcité, and you have a lot of examples right now in France about that, in education, or legal secularism. In, a preceding in the preceding context of opposition to legislation making marriage accessible to same-sex couples, commonly referred as mariage pour tous, a law was ultimately promulgated in April 2013. And Céline Béraud and Philippe Portier, two sociologists, showed how Catholic mobilization proceeded from a real, what they call, bioethical activism. So Catholic discourse was based on a rhetoric of fear that both supports and nourishes moral panic about the family's future. In my research, I prefer the expression rhetoric of anxiety instead of rhetoric of fear, anxiety, considering that this word, anxiety, refers to a permanent and diffuse feeling of worry and insecurity, whereas the term of fear it refers to a strong emotion resulting from awareness on, of an immediate mm. danger. So I'm more like thinking about anxiety. So this rhetoric was also at work during recent debates about uh, uh, opening, uh, discussing ART for lesbian couples and single uh, women. And so those people, those very conservative Catholics, gather in associations such as Alliance Vita and the Manif Portus. And again, those Catholics do not represent all the Catholics. They're like 2% of the French Catholics. And most Catholics are in favor, like we have a poll in France just before the beginning of the Etat Généraux, showing that 35% of the Catholic uh, people were in favor of opening RRT to same-sex couple. And this uh, figure raised to 55 where they were not, where they were defined themselves as Catholic, but not going to the church. So you see that the people, the, the Catholics I'm talking about, it's a very few, um, they're very active, but it's only, it represents really a very few Catholics. And plus, after the opening of um, wedding to everyone, to, to gay couples, in fact, those, I mean, most of the Catholics, like everyone, discovered that they had friends, family who are gay and they get married and they just discovered that it was not destroying their families. So they get also very much more uh, open-minded about, about this issue. Um, so, so opposition rhetorics is usually presented as secular and universal and not at all as religious by conservative. And thus, Ludovine de la Rochère, who was the president of La Manif pour tous, demonstration for her, in public testimony at the National Assembly on October 24, 2018, I, I had the opportunity to assist to that uh, audience. She stated, our views are being, it's my translation, our views are being reduced to a religious point of view on these topics. The subject is not religious. All institutions are making the same observation. So you see, the thing is that we're not religious. We defend this because it's like universal values that anyone shares. First, we should note that French Catholics so are far from anonymous, but I already say that. And uh, so there's really a strong separation between the dogma and the pastoral, the more flexible pastoral positions, and also the leaves face of those Catholics. So there's in fact three parts, the dogma, the pastoral uh, positions, like you see, priests helping people who are going to get to RT, priests who are uh, welcoming children and baptized children from gay couples, you know, so that it's, it's uh, really um, it's kind of uh, flexible. And um, um, so during the Etat Généraux de la Bioéthique, conservative Catholics were present in large number and their rhetoric permiti permitted it this debate. Catholic participation was also very high in public deba debates held at the CCNA, the National Assembly, and in different media. And what is very interesting too is how much the media, even not non-religious medias, they gave uh, 
talk to, I mean, they let, they interview a lot Catholic and uh, religion about what do they think about ART. So that was uh, quite uh, interesting. So by looking more closely at examples of their discourse, we can better understand the forms of their rhetoric. Indeed, on January 3, 2018, La Croix, La Croix is a, uh, as you can, it means cross. So as you can imagine, it's a Catholic newspaper. And uh, this French Catholic newspaper devoted a special issue to bioethics in which several representatives of the Catholic Church expressed their point of view. The Bishop of Le Havre, Jean-Luc Brunin, wrote that the bishops who have been appointed by the conference will participate in the debate and engage in discussion with other experts or elected representatives. They will insist, he says, on the fact that what the church defends on these issues is, um, is reasonable, important to the future of our um, humanity. These religious representatives were elaborating some kind of a discourse of moral consciousness. And thus, Pierre Dornelas, who's the Archbishop of Rennes, and he was the head of the, uh, of the French Bishop Conference Bioethics uh, Working Group, he addressed a letter to the Catholics of ille vilaine which is a part of France, and he was in charge of that part of uh, France. And in that letter from uh, January 2018, just after the opening of the public, um, of the Etat Généraux, the public forum, he concluded, it's time for us to awaken our sleepy consciences and those of our contemporaries. So you see, they're like whistle blow blows blows blowers, <laughs> I would say. And um, so that together we may be amazed at the beauty of life in every human being from their conception to their natural death. Dear friends, find your own means to say that every human life is a priceless treasure. So this discourse aimed to mobilize Catholics and beyond. In June 2017, before the beginning of the Etat Généraux uh, de uh, la Bioéthique, the public forum, the CCNE has published an opinion in favor of extending access to donor insemination and in vitro fertilization to single women and lesbian couples. And in response to that, the Bishops' Conference of France expressed strong worries that such a change in a law might ultimately lead to uh, the authorization of surrogacy. The two uh, things are very linked in the, in the mind of the people who are opposed to opening RT because they say, okay, if you open it to gay, uh, lesbian couples, then they will have the gay women, the the men gay will have uh, will uh, protest and will say, okay, if the woman can do it, why can't we do it? And the only way for a gay man couple to have kids is to have surrogacy. So it's like a theory des domino, domino theory, you know. So, as early as March 17, well ahead of the Etat Généraux, a working group was created within the French Conference of Bishops to offer Catholic tools, including a booklet of bioethic presentations. So that was my, one of my materials. So there's a page on ART which explains that to extend ART to single women and lesbian complete couples completes the dissociation between biological fertilization and social kinship. Thus, if the human being is a social animal, he, she is also a living body. To divide human being in two, separating the relation of filiation from its biological root, is an act of violence against the unity of the human person. So this person is a unified all, at the same time biological, psychic, spiritual, and social. Those are my, my translation again. So, but, but you'll see that they're not advancing any religious, you know, it's more like psychological balance. And so this booklet also states that extending ART to all women is an open door to the selection of individual or legal eugenics. That's also a main topic, oh. you know. And I, I'm sure that Kimberly might have met, met it also that uh, argument of uh, eugenics, this is eugenism yeah. among the doctors, you know. So, so this discourse follows the path set by Jürgen Habermas and is expressed free of a slope, uh, slippery slope. It's like a one. It's like also the domino theory, you know, it's just you're going on a slippery. Once again, the Catholic Church is presenting itself as an authority in those bioethical fields. These concerns about the human person and the risk of eugenics can be linked with the Pope's concern about the future of mankind, already prefigured in 1999 by John John Paul II, 
uh, who had elaborated the concept of human e ecology, I don't know if you're familiar with it, focused on the defense of the familiar, familiar values. Thus, the purpose of the Catholic Magisterium is to show that the rules concerning the family are not founded on faith, that's to always the same point, but uh, on a correct and moral understanding of nature's mechanisms. You see, so it's not religious, it's not a question of faith. So during the public debate organ organized around the Etat Généraux de la Bioéthique, opponents of the extension of ART to single women and lesbian couples mobilized with a lot of energy. So they, and it was very interesting because whenever you wanted to have information about the debates, you, you should go, you would go on the site, on the website of those conservative associations and you have all the calendar of the manifestation, more than on the public uh, website. So, and they provide, uh, they also provided links to register to the event. So you see they were very, very uh, mobilized. And during the debates, it was difficult to in, in identify the person who are, talking, who are talking as Catholics because they never introduced, it's also the same point, they never introduced themselves as Catholics. They would say, I'm Luke, I'm Alice, I'm a bookkeeper, I'm a nurse, I'm a retired engineer, or they would say, I'm a simple citizen. Uh, unless, you know, when someone would say, I'm a family, like this guy say, I'm a family patriarch and the happy grandfather of uh, 12 grandchildren, then you can imagine. And the way they were dressing also, you can imagine that he, he might be Catholic. But in their discourses, one would usually find themes developed by the Catholic Magisterium. At the end of the opening session of the Etat Généraux organized in Paris, by what is, uh, we have uh, ethical spaces, uh, in, um, in different parts of, uh, of France. The floor was given to the public after scientists had spoken. A man who presented himself as a father of a large family insisted on the question of commodification. That's also a big argument that they have about surrogacy. And he referred to the slave market in Libya and egg freezing by Gogol. He deplored the terrible excesses to come. For him, through the debates on surrogacy on ART, so you see they, all, they, always, they were always gathering the two, you know. Even though the CCNO said we're not in favor of surrogacy, it's only about ART, they would gather everything, the slippery slope. The main question is the question of the commodification of men, women and children. He never addressed the scientist's statement, turning instead to his prepared response, you know, like they were just talking, I mean, they had that speech prepared to do. And uh, so in Nantes, another debate I was, uh, I had the possibility to assist, another person said, ART for all is the first step towards eugenics. It is in the nature of man to always want more. One must be vigilant. So there's that kind of rhetoric of anxiety, and it's part of a moral crusade too, aimed at warning contemporaries about the danger that threatened them. In Paris, during the session, um, I, in fact, I was invited as an expert in an by an association of medical students, quite a liberal association, and, um, and uh, several persons, I mean, there were like 50 persons in the, in the amphitheater, in the classroom, and most of them, they were uh, clearly uh, militant against uh, opening uh, ART. And it was, uh, they were very numerous and it was very interesting because the organizer of the debates, they were surprised by that. In fact, they were surprised that uh, uh, if they thought that they were going to have a lot of students, but it was not student at all. And so, and they have also all that strategy, you know, like the, in fact, at the end of the debates, they would gather, so they knew them, in fact, but uh, they have that very classical strategy. They would put one there, one there, one there in the class, and they would pretend that they do not know each other. But they were saying, it was interesting that I had the opportunity to assist to several events because it was the same arguments, like the egg freezing by Google, I had it like several times, the sperm that you can buy in Denmark, you know, and even the same rhetoric, like women say, oh, I was so shocked, and you know, it was so terrible, and, and um, and then I um, I have I know that student who was working on um, on one of the association and she uh, she made a training session with them and she told me that they gave them language elements to answer so but really you saw it in the debates you know they were saying always the the same exam and never never talk about religion and. Um, so, um, so they were very virulent and very, uh, very uh, aggressive. 
and uh, they were, I mean, the, they were very, very young to me too. <laughs> I remember in that particular session. Also because I'm a woman, I guess. So, so the same time, then you had those um, manifestations and you also have a, a website where you could put some um, um, uh, propositions, you know. It was an open website and you could say, okay, I do agree with this, I do not, or make a proposition. And so you have the same themes embedded in the same rhetoric of anxiety in the propositions which were made on the website of the Etat Généraux de la Bioéthique. So there, there were several sections on that website and one of them is called Procreation and Society. And um, so people, you could do proposals on it. I, I, it took me a long time before understanding how it was working. So the thing is that w during it was open, you could say, um, I'm in favor of uh, lesbian couple access, lesbian couple have access to ART because it's more equal. And, but in fact, most of the arguments were, and it shows the mobilization of the opponents where it's, uh, it's not natural, it's a crime, it's, uh, it's something disrespectful of the humanity. And, uh, and that was very interesting because I started to look at those uh, comments uh, at the beginning. And in fact, at the beginning, I think like the, the people who were in favor, they did not pay attention to that mobilization. They did not mobilize. And then they realized that the only person who were mobilized uh, were the person, the, the opponents to opening ART. So the first week it was just like, it's unmoral, it's not normal, it's the end of the normal family. And after one week, you would say more comments from a uh, partisan of the opening the ART. So that was interesting. And um, so, those in among the opponents, they uh, invokes what we call invariant, unvarying things. And, uh, and for example, one guy writes, like man, ethics doesn't change every five years. It should be an invariant based on universal and indisputable principles. We must give up modifying as a multi-millionaire anthropology. So they pretend that it is anthropological. Mm -hmm. Um, so during his testimony at the National Assembly, Tuc du Alderville, so the, the director of the Alliance Vita, uh, he, he present uh, what he call, he, he said, I'm representing what I call a school of thought on human ecology. And he, he explains that man, the challenge is to transform the battle against infertility and against eugenics into two major national causes that should uni unite the French. In France, we hold the world record for the det detection of neonatal disability. So our fight is like to stop abortion and just to, l to make people have uh, disabled uh, children and just uh, in order to respect the moral, um, the moral dignity and the life uh, of, the, of the person. But this rhetoric also evokes a positive response in secular society. So that's kind of confusing. There's a, you know, also, the, the, it echoes in some, in the secular society. For example, by José Bové, who is a French ecological leader. But one reminds that José Bové has been raised Catholic and he has, I mean, there's something about his uh, Catholic uh, education which wo is working like this. On the other hand, you have another man, Jacques Testard, is the biologist who found with René Friedman, who gave birth to the first IVF baby, and he's really into that rhetoric of slippery slope. But each time he's evoking this slippery slope, he always said, I'm not Catholic, I'm not religious. And it's very interesting because the religious one, they say, you see, we're having some universal arguments to say that and the people who do are not religious say we're not religious so it's um, the it's you see how they want to legitimate their discourse you know using like secular and like so-called universal uh, values the catholic religious discourse denounces pot pot potential excesses that are fund funded not only on religious values but also on values that concern the secular world vulnerability Respect, dignity. Uh, what differs is the emphasis put on the sacred character of life. And that's, you know, that's also part of the an answer to your uh, remark, is that uh, they use secular uh, arguments, but also they just say, 
uh, they, they, there's something different. Like they've, they've got that kind of anthropology. They say it's anthropology. And, but you see that the, the anthropology that they defend is a special kind of anthropology. And also they say life is sacred and, you know, and not uh, say, I mean, uh, of course, I'm, I'm against people who are uh, vulnerable. I mean, I want to protect them. So they use that kind of uh, secular discourse and I want to respect everyone. I want to respect, I mean, I'm, I'm in favor of dignity of everyone. But there's slight difference like that universal anthropology they pretend they belong to and also the, the, the fact that life is very uh, sec, uh, sec, sacred, sacred, sacred. sacred. And um, so, and indeed, um, so referring uh, to, uh, to ecology is also a way of uh, inter integrating contemporary concerns in their discourse. There's a lot about ecology, you know and especially attractive to young people. Indeed, one also finds a rhetoric of anxiety in scholarly and ordinary public discourses that goes well beyond conservative Catholic circles. So as a conclusion, because I've been very long, but we've, we've been talking, so, <laughs> so that was also interesting. Catholics, together with other opponents of extended access to ART, have elaborated narratives founded on a rhetoric of anxiety that attempts to warn their fellow citizens against, against the dramatic social consequences of these legislative changes. Through their church and its representatives, as well as through all the person, religious representative, institutional organization, scientists who spoke at the Etat Généraux de la Bioéthique, they have expressed the wish to be an integral part of the process of elaborating French society's bioethical norms. Moreover, the French Catholic hierarchy has emphasized its legitimacy to intervene in this field, considering that they remain a moral authority in family matters. Despite Catholic opposition to bioethical issues elsewhere in the world, the strategy that bases its claim on France Catholic roots is publicly assumed and popular to the French context of exculturation and laicite, secularism. So the Catholic Church feels all the more justified in intervening in the public sphere that the French Parliament is legislating on practices that were once exclusively regulated in France by the Catholic Magisterium. From the church point of view, by choosing to legislate on intimate matters, contraception, abortion, ART, French authorities have de facto given religion a place in the biotic debates and a voice in democratic space. But will its influence be felt as deeply in public space and society today? Public discussion and debates during the revision of the bioethic show showed that there is no consensus as to what religion plays in the public arena and in the politic uh, of intimacy uh, how it to be. Thus, uh, what the place of religious discourse might be in a secular state, what where democratic public cultures allows, allows the expression of diverse opinions remains a problem to be solved. So as I told you, the, the, vo the law was finally adopted in France, but since they, they were, I mean, they, they really mobilized. So thank you for your attention. <laughs>